Hi there, my name is Ezekiel Ward. I've been the Chief Compliance Officer at a number of multinationals, and I now advise companies on how to build and refresh ethics and compliance programs. For seven years, I was CCO at Norwegian multinational Yara. As you can read from the media, the company faced a corruption crisis beginning about a decade ago and lasting several years. Since then, the company has gone from strength to strength. As the corruption crisis eased, we were able to lift our gaze and see how all of our risk management work fitted together. It came as no surprise that we had focused perhaps too much on managing corruption risks and that that needed to change. I started to build a human rights program in 2015, and in doing so, I revisited the origins of ethics and compliance. I came to the conclusion that if I could start over, I would have built a broader compliance program, tackling the whole array of environmental, social, and governance risks. That's how I came to see ESG as the future of ethics and compliance. Let's start by looking at the origins of compliance, which are undoubtedly in the legal and risk management fields. Legal teams were traditionally focused on transactional work. Although the legal role had been expanded, much of the work involved being asked for advice by the business and providing counsel on the way forward. Only some general counsels went further than that. However, in the 1990s, a series of efforts began to bear fruit. Economists researching corruption realized the extent to which it was a social issue and one which was holding back societies. They documented the role of multinational companies in harmful corrupt practices abroad. In international organizations like the OECD and the United Nations developed charters and guidelines to address the issue. Simultaneously, numerous scandals from Enron to Parmalat and Tyco raised the public profile of corporate governance. Legislation in the early to mid-2000s laid the foundations for the last two decades of increased enforcement and the proliferation of compliance programs. For regulated and unregulated companies alike, this came as a shock to the system, and some executives have been caught out, paying a high personal and professional price for compliance failings. Amidst all of this, compliance teams have been assigned the task of taking a far more proactive approach to risk than legal teams previously did. Compliance programs have been created to keep ahead of changes which are happening at an ever-increasing pace. CCOs have come to represent a dynamic group in developing cutting-edge risk management practices. Being systematic about compliance can help protect your company in three main ways. Firstly, protecting the mission and the vision. Many companies have set lofty missions on topics like protecting the planet. But if the mission isn't seen as genuine, your brand could be harmed. In other words, if you set a mission of protecting the planet, but are in fact harming the planet, people are going to react strongly. Why should they believe in your brand or your input to public life? Chief compliance officers and our risk management colleagues have to protect the company by keeping executives honest when they set ambitious missions. Secondly, the risks companies are facing are complex and demand enhanced collaboration internally. Take the examples of modern slavery or child labor. They're not only legal issues. We need colleagues from the business to be involved, as well as all of the support functions, compliance, health and safety, communications, audit and sustainability. Only by working together can the risks be properly and efficiently managed. Finally, external scrutiny is demanding improved responses. We're being measured like never before on topics from greenhouse gas emissions to responsible tax practices. We need to have a consistent, clear voice on all of these topics. And we need to be looking across these diverse risks to help the company with competing priorities and limited resources. My view is that true integrated risk management is the answer to all of these challenges. ESG is the future of compliance. So how do compliance functions start their journey towards this future? The first step to take is understanding your stakeholders' perspectives. ESG means different things to different people, and you need to know how they're approaching the numerous topics within the field. For example, investors are interested in long-term returns on capital. Companies who look after ESG risks should be safer investments in the long run. Governments need to address ESG risks as they impact on security and politics. Corporates have begun to use ESG as a form of efficient integrated risk management. And finally, the public, all of us as individuals, have become far more conscious of ESG topics and insistent upon visible action. We want to see fundamental change. Once you know your stakeholders' views, you can build out what your definition of ESG means for your organization. There are three pillars. Environmental risks include broad topics like climate change, natural resources, and the ambient environment. 
You can break each one of these into much more detail, as we demonstrate in this graphic. Social risks include everything from human rights to health and safety and how we work together. Governance covers foundational responsibilities, business ethics, and reporting. At this stage, you should go back to your stakeholders and see what they think. They will let you know whether you've missed anything and which risks are material to them. Your board and executive management should also be keen to understand what you and the other risk management functions are working towards, so do keep them informed. At this point, you'll be ready to build a picture of current status. Map out where your organization is and what gaps need to be filled. For example, you might be really good as an organization at creating policies, but terrible at meaningful implementation. Or you might have great audit routines which are hampered by poor corporate rules. You need to know where to start filling the gaps in a structured manner so that your ESG risks are properly managed. There's a great deal more to do on this journey, but this should see you starting off on the right foot. Perhaps the most important aspect of your ESG work is to ensure good collaboration. Make sure your work is perceived by colleagues in a positive way by communicating openly and ensuring good cross-functional involvement in key decisions. I would recommend using a regular committee to share ideas and progress. Eventually, you'll begin to see the huge similarities between your ESG program and the work you're familiar with from your compliance program. You set a management commitment, identify your risks, set policies, and so on. It's a well-trodden compliance roadmap, but it addresses a much broader set of issues. In summary, today we've looked at the origins of ethics and compliance and the benefits of looking across the risk spectrum to include environmental, social, and governance risks. We've also considered how to define an ESG framework and what ESG means to different people. Thank you for joining us in these masterclasses. It's been great spending the time with you, and we hope you found the insights useful.